we talked about the idea of logos operating on chaos in order to to bring being into being. And that's predicated on a worldview that that's not precisely materialistic in its fundamental orientation. So it's predicated on a viewpoint that one way of looking at being is that it's a, a place of potential, maybe of unlimited potential, and that what acts on that potential to, to bring it into being is what modern people would call consciousness, but what the ancients called logos, which I actually think is a better word than consciousness. I think it's a more encompassing word because it doesn't only involve the act of being there, so to speak, like the existentialists would say, but it also involves active exploration, both, both physical and imaginistic, as well as communication about the results of that exploration. And I think that it's perfectly reasonable to face the world as if what you're facing is a pool of potential that you are capable of shaping. And then the question is, into what do you wish to shape it? And I think that's actually the ultimate question. You know, people often ask questions like, what is the meaning of life? And I actually think to some degree that that's an ill-posed question. I think that you can observe the many meanings of life. Some of them are negative. No one questions their reality, and some of them are positive. And we're more likely to question the reality of the positive meanings that manifest themselves because we get overwhelmed with our apprehension of the fact that life is tragic and that we're finite and mortal. But that doesn't mean that those meanings aren't real. I would also say that as I've considered more and more carefully the way that value structures might be hierarchically organized and gone farther and farther out to what I think of as the edge or the ultimate reaches of that hierarchical organization that you know, your, your, your identity as a finite individual being sort of localized in time and space now and here, that, that encapsulates generally what people think about themselves as, as, as real individuals, but that there are metaphysical spaces outside of that that are they're hyper-real in some sense. And in one of those metaphysical spaces, you're the embodiment of nature and culture in, in the most real of senses. And... In a, in a metaphysical space that's just beyond that, you're the logos that transforms order into chaos and sometimes the reverse. And then outside of that, which I think is in some sense the final metaphysical domain, the question is, what is it exactly is it that you're up to? And I think that what you should be up to is the attempt to transform being into something resembling classical conceptualizations of paradise and that has nothing to do with the attempt to impose an ideological structure on the world so that you can bring it into alignment with your a priori convictions that's not the right answer the right answer is something different I mean one of the things you want to ask yourself is you know is it better to work for the abolition of misery or for its extension which I think in some sense is the fundamental metaphysical question I think that was posed properly in the 20th century because we learned at that point exactly how far we could push voluntary evil without bringing everything to a halt. And I think we pushed it right to the limit. And, you know, maybe we're still not done with that game. It's hard to say, but things look like they have improved, I would say, overall since 1989, since the Berlin Wall fell down, although you certainly see signs of recidivism frequently, and you see that right now, for example, in, the, in Russia. Now, the Russians are trying to find their own way, and they're afraid in many ways of Western individuality. They believe that it's got a fatally nihilistic element, and that one of, that, that one of the consequences of that nihilistic element will be the undoing of everything that culture has produced that's of any value. And so the main Russian political philosopher at this point, who's one of Putin's advisors, is a, he's a nationalist of sorts. But... The reason I'm telling you that is because the ideological conflict that began in the 20th century is by no means over, and it isn't obvious that liberal individualism constitutes the final solution to the problems of mankind. Now, that's not, I'm, not saying that, I'm not saying that as a cynic, because 
as far as systems go, it's a pretty damn good system. But I think that people in the West still suffer from a spiritual sickness that's not, that's a consequence of what Nietzsche outlined and Dostoevsky outlined as the major philosophical moves of the 19th century, and that was the demolition of metaphysical belief by rationalism and empiricism, some of which was fully justified and some of which I think was an overextension of the emergent forms of knowledge. Uh, so I'm going to go through the rest of Genesis today and explain to you what I think it means and then I'm going to tell you why I think that's relevant and so this is an extension of the stories that we've been talking about during the entirety of the course. Um, we talked last time about the fact that in, in the second Genesis story, God takes Eve out of Adam and what that might mean. And the idea there is that it's something like the, the feminine or material world has to be transposed into something that's symbolically masculine in order for it to become properly oriented. So the idea in some sense is that human beings, not just women, but human beings in general, have to rise above their material substrate and transform themselves at a psychological level or at the level of consciousness and that that's actually a real level and if you accept, accept the presupposition that consciousness is actually an active agent in the extraction of order from chaos or in the extraction of reality from potential there's no reason to, to delegate consciousness to a epiphenomenal to, to, the, to the status of something that's epiphenomenal, even though it seems to depend on the existence of a material substrate for its manifestation. It requires a different way of thinking. Okay, so we're going to start with the idea of the garden. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it. <clears throat> 